This is why you should play Carving Sword. Whenever someone asks me which weapon tree they should play, I always recommend swords. Swords are easy to understand, yet rewarding to master, and the options in the sword tree cover every type of content in the game, except for maybe ganking. The core mechanic that ties all the swords together are heroic charges. You get heroic charges by hitting enemies with your Q ability. You can have up to 3, and you get 12% extra attack speed and move speed for each charge. The signature abilities of each sword also become stronger the more heroic charges you have, consuming them. This makes the gameplay pattern fairly straightforward for a beginner. Get 3 charges, and then unleash the pain. Out of all the swords, the best one to start with is easily the Carving Sword. Let me explain. Carving Sword's signature ability is Fearless Strike. You dash to a target location dealing damage to all enemies you pass through. Enemies hit also have their resistances reduced for 6 seconds, and the resistance reduction is stronger the more heroic charges you have, consuming them. One of the best parts of this ability is the freedom you have in using it. Unlike the other swords, your damage is not dependent on having 3 charges. Since you get full damage even without charges, a zero charge fearless strike is perfectly fine for finishing off enemies. If you need to, you can also just use the dash as an escape or a gap closer. That doesn't mean you should always use your E at zero charges though, because the resistance shred is one of the strongest debuffs in the game. It wasn't until I did the math that I realized how ridiculously strong it is. Let me explain. Your damage resistances are armor and magic resist, which reduce physical and magical damage taken. At 1200 item power, a carving sword reduces resistances by up to 76. That resistance reduction takes someone in a 1200 IP cleric rub from 56 and 60% damage reduction down to 35 and 44%. That person effectively takes 49 to 43% more damage for the next 6 seconds. Not bad. For leather and plate armors, their higher resistances means the resistance shred is slightly less effective against them but it's still 36 to 27% more damage. All of that together makes Carving Sword one of the most versatile weapons in the game. In fact, you could probably make it work in literally any type of content. Even in high level play where specialization is important, Carving Sword sees a lot of usage because it's just that good. Another point of flexibility for Carving Sword is its choice of W ability. Each one is unique and has its own distinct use, and which one you choose will change your playstyle. The three abilities you'll use most are Parry Strike, Splitting Slash, and Iron Will. Parry Strike is the one you'll use by default. For a second, you become immune to damage in CC, reflecting any damage you would have taken. You also deal damage to enemies close to you at the end of the channel. If you time it well, you can block important abilities and reflect tons of damage. Parry Strike is very strong when multiple people are targeting you. Splitting Slash can be a decent option if you want a more offensive ability than Parry Strike. You hit in a line, dealing damage and rooting enemies. Very straightforward. Be careful, because the hitbox is very thin, so it's hard to hit enemies if they're not moving predictably. Use in situations where you don't want your damage to be dependent on enemies hitting you. Iron Will is your utility option. It gives you a heroic charge, 20% extra movement speed, increases your defense, and makes you immune to purges for 3 seconds. This is the ability to take if you need survivability, for example while gathering, transporting, or fighting in a large group. Alright, enough about the abilities, let's get into some builds. For solo content and roaming the open world, I run Carving Sword with Guardian Helmet, Assassin Jacket, Demon Boots or Soldier Boots, Undead Cape, Healing Potions, Invis Potions, and Eel Stews or Sandwiches. For skills, take Second Q, Parry Strike, and the Heroic Fighting Passive. You can also take Splitting Slash if you have high item power. This build gives you a ton of tools to outplay opponents and take outnumbered fights. The Assassin Jacket Invis buys you some breathing room which you can use to wait out cooldowns. The mobility of Carving Sword, combined with Demon Boots and Undead Gabe, means you'll regularly survive against impossible odds. If you want odds that are even more impossible, you can try diving group dungeons or static dungeons. Unfortunately, killing a group is hard, so that's why we make the mobs do most of the work for us. Bait the group into pulling extra mobs, and abuse mob aggro to cause as much disruption as you can. Prioritize whoever is the mob aggro, bonus points if it's a healer, and hit them with Fearless Strike. Watch as the mobs start dealing 50% more damage because of the resistance shred, and then mop up kills as the group starts panicking. If it sounds easy, don't be fooled. It takes a lot of experience and luck to pull off, and it only takes a small mistake to kill you. Even if you do play perfectly, it doesn't always work out, so be prepared to die a lot if you want those juicy clips for YouTube. 
If you don't want a level carving sword by farming open world mobs, I've got a build for running solo dungeons. Take carving sword with mage cowl, druid robe or mercenary jacket, scholar sandals, thetford cape, poisons, and soups. Druid robe is faster, but mercenary jacket is needed if you have lower item power. For skills, take the second Q, parry strike, and heroic fighting passive. If you don't have parry strike, splitting slash is also good. Against bosses, swap to first Q and deep cuts passive. While Carving Sword isn't bad for solo dungeons, the damage is a little bit lacking compared to some of the top tier builds. If you can compensate for your lower damage with higher tier gear or lower tier dungeons, your high mobility means you'll speed right through them. If you're interested in group content, that's where Carving Sword unlocks its true potential. The Resistance Shred is a force multiplier, so a well-placed Fearless Strike coordinated with other DPS absolutely deletes enemies from the game. It's no surprise that Carving Sword is one of the most popular weapons for fighting while outnumbered. Play well, and you can take on groups many times your size. For the build, run Carving Sword with Scholar Cal, Hellion Jacket, any leather shoes for refreshing sprint, Martlock Cape, Resistance Potions, and Eel Stews. For smaller fights, take Second Q, Splitting Slash, and Heroic Fighting. For larger fights where your personal damage is less important, swap in Iron Will instead. Before starting this video, I thought I didn't like Carving Sword. It wasn't until I took it out for my first solo roam and almost won a 1v3 that I realized this weapon is a lot more fun than I was giving it credit for. As you can probably tell, Carving Sword is one of my favorite weapons now, and if you've watched up to this point, hopefully I've convinced you to give it a try. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what weapons you'd be interested in seeing a video on next. Thanks for watching. Peace. Jackson, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? There's literally thousands of them. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I had to try it. <laughs>